Adam, this game to me is a very dangerous game. Uh, and I'll tell you why. Pitt is one and two. And they law they beat Wofford in the first week in a game they just blew them out. You would expect them uh, to win that game handily, and they did. Lost to Cincinnati. Lost at West Virginia. So two regional type of games. Um, the West Virginia one, of course, backyard brawl, big rivalry. And quite honestly, Pitt didn't look very good in either one of them. So let's. what do we know about Pitt? We know Pat Narduzzi is the head coach. I think he is a good coach. I think they're well coached. They've they've always been a very steady team under Pat Narduzzi. They've never been incredible, but they've never been bad. They're they're always a very good team. He is uh, he is a defensive minded coach, and their defensive numbers are very very good. Some of that is how the games have played out. Some of that is the competition they have played. And some of that is they're good. They're top, they lead the ACC and top five in the country in total yards allowed and passing yards allowed. Now, are those the most modern way to judge if a defense is good or not? There's a million ways to do it, but those are still hard numbers that you can look at and say, hmm, this team doesn't give up a lot of yards. Uh, and they're only giving up about 17 points per game. So a very good defensive team, as they always are. Aggressive, physical. Pitt has more sacks than any team in the nation from 2019 to now. So, I mean, this is this is what they do. Adam, the offense has been bad. Like, bad, 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 bad. And... A lot of that has centered on the quarterback, Phil Jerkovic. Now, that's a familiar name if you've followed ACC football. Started at Notre Dame, went to Boston College where he was the starter for several seasons, and now at Pittsburgh. It's three schools, gents. Well, I think the last one's a graduate transfer. Once you graduate, you can do anything you want. You can play for nine years. Literally, you you can. So, Jerkovic... Faced Carolina in the 2020 season when Carolina went up to BC in front of no fans. You were there. You were there. I was there. We were both there. (laughs) The attendance was two. Yeah, it was Adam. Both of us are here. That day, he threw the ball more than 50 times for over 300 yards, a couple scores, and he was very difficult to take down. He is big. He's listed at 6'5", 235. He is a big guy. Big guy, old guy, Adam. Because he's a super senior. It's his last year. Six year. So big old guy. In many ways. So we, as in you and me, and the Tar Heels, have seen Phil Dracovic be good. And I think he was, I mean, I've always thought he was a pretty good quarterback. Now, Adam, these last two games, he has not been good. I'll grab my notes here in just a second, but the the completion percentage for Djokovic in these last two games, it's like 35% or something. Even if you include the Wofford game, he's below 50%. He's next to last in the country in completion percentage. He threw three interceptions last game against West Virginia. And two of the three were not good. Like It it wasn't like West Virginia made a play. It was he threw the ball to West Virginia. Adam, he has just been getting absolutely hammered in the press in, in Pittsburgh. I mean, in just reading some of the columns and articles. And it's a pro town, and they are treating him like a pro play. I mean, they're just killing him. And killing Pat Narduzzi for playing him. So to me, that's dangerous. You know he's better. You've seen it. You know he's better than what he has put on the field these last couple games. You know that he hears the negativity. And you know 
that he knows this is his last year of college football, so he knows he needs to play better. And if and if he can, when you match it up with a defense that's good, a well-coached team, in a little bit of a desperate spot, that's a recipe for a challenging game for the Tar Heels. They are going to have to play well. I think Carolina is better than Pitt. But Carolina is going to have to play well to win this game. They can't show up and assume Jerkovic's going to not play well. I also think they're to the point where if he doesn't play well, I think they're probably going to make a move and won't hesitate to do it in the middle of the game. So I, this feels like a, a pendulum game for Pitt. They're going to want to swing it the right way, and the Tar Heels are going to try and deny that. I think exactly because of what you said about what Pat Narduzzi has put on the record – in terms of his tenure at Pitt, that alone tells you they are not going to end the season as poorly as they look right now. They're going to eventually be roughly 8-4. and four. A down year for Pitt would be probably about 7-5. and five. A great year for Pitt would be probably around 9-3. and three. They're going to be exactly what they are every single year, and that tells you that they're going to be better than they have been. And remember... As bad as they have been, their defense has still been really good. Yeah. So that leads you back to, okay, is Dracovic going to figure it out? Well, Dracovic, throughout his entire college football career, playing at the exact level he's playing at now, has been pretty much the same guy. It's not like he's moving up from a, a lower division or something and you're not sure if he can compete at this level. He has shown the ability to do so. It seems unlikely that he just completely forgot how right. to be an ACC quarterback. Obviously, something is wrong because he's completing 34.6% of his passes against top-level competition. So, some, as we used to say back on the farm, Jones, something ain't right. Yeah. But he's had this whole week to figure it out. And also, as you said, the hook is going to be quick, I would think. So, you hope. Carolina's had some other situations with backup quarterbacks where things didn't go quite as well and they perhaps weren't expecting that switch. I think you have to go into this game expecting that switch. And there's that whole thing about Carolina Pitt is always very close. No matter how good the two teams are, it is going to be a close game. You're playing on the road. It's a night game. You got to sit around all day. The weather may be a little uncertain, but overall I think probably okay. No uh, monsoons for the – Two minutes of time, Carolina will have a possession in overtime. Right, yeah. If there's going to be bad weather, it'll be when Drake May is about to take the snap. Um, So, I, you're right. I think this is a dangerous game, but also a game, like P.J. Flick would say, hmm. a game with so much opportunity. Yeah. Because if the Tar Heels could win this, you're 4-0 going into a bye week, and you're feeling great about things. Now, as you would expect – Jerkovic's struggles have not all been because of him. He, he has been pressured a lot. David Hale, who covers the ACC, sent out a tweet earlier this week that said that Pitt had allowed pressure on almost 45% of their straight drop back passes. That's a lot. He was sacked. He, Jerkovic, not David Hale, Jakovic sacked five times in the game against Cincinnati. Uh, in that game, he was 10 of 32 for 179 yards. In the West Virginia game, he was 8 of 20 for 81 yards and three interceptions. That's bad. But again, you know the potential to be a legitimate ACC level quarterback is in there. So for Carolina, a, a, a challenging game, a big game in that regard. And let's flip this around a little bit. I mean, I don't mean this like I think Pitt is going to play dirty because I don't think they're dirty, but they're going to try to get after Drake May. That's who they are. And remember, they there was a big swing in the game last year was when Kalijah Kansi, their their excellent defensive lineman, was called for targeting. I don't remember who it was against on for player wise for Carolina, 
But remember, Pat Narduzzi made a big deal about how he didn't think that was right and that cost him the game and all these things. And he even mentioned in the press conference earlier this week, a year later. That's when he heard the Tar Heels saying that yeah. they had a chance oh, yeah. to win the game. That's right. According to Pat Narduzzi, yeah. that once once Clancy was out, <laughs> yeah. all the Tar Heels were like, guys, we've got a chance to beat Pittsburgh now. Gosh golly, guys, now we can win. Let's go try hard now. So they're going to go after Drake Makers. Again, that's who they are. They're, they're going to try to create pressure. They're going to try to hit the quarterback. It, it would be – it would behoove Carolina to be able to run the ball in this game. They couldn't do it last year against Pitt, and Drake May still went out and did Drake May stuff where he threw for 388 yards and five, five touchdowns. Now – a large majority of those yards went to Josh Downs and to Antoine Green, who both had over 100 yards receiving in the game a year ago. Neither one of them are here now. So, Drake May can do it. We've seen him do it. But as has been the one of the storylines and themes of this year, boy, it'd be so much better if he didn't have to. If it ends up that that's how it works out, you know he can. But Caroline would love to do it in a more balanced way, I think. And if you can run the ball, just all the basic stuff that we know. It's going to slow the defense down. It's going to set up your play action. Just all, it's going to have you hold the ball more. All the very basic football things. But, Adam, I do think that will be important for the Tar Heels. I think it will increase their chances to win if they can do that at a high level, particularly in this game. And I have to think, similar to what we talked about last week, I think all week in Pittsburgh when they've been having their meetings, especially – along the offensive line and the defensive line, they've been telling their guys, you can push these guys around. We're Pittsburgh. We're tougher than Carolina. We're always tougher than Carolina. That's how we keep it close because they're so fancy with their passes and they're, they're fast guys, but we're tough. We're Pittsburgh. We're going to go out there and out-tough them. And so I'm guessing that just sounds like something Pat Narduzzi would say. I'm guessing that's what they've been hearing all week. But I really think if Carolina's offensive and defensive lines could play just as physically as Pittsburgh plays, that's when Carolina's got a chance to really take control of this game. Like, you can win the game without doing that. You could control the game if if you can beat them up front because that is where they live. Pitt's had a lot of turnover personnel-wise from last year. There's just a lot of different guys. And so – they are playing with some new guys, particularly on the offensive side. I'll say I, I think their backs are good. Um, Rodney Hammond and Sebo Flimister are their top two running backs. I think they're solid. I think they've got a really good tight end in, in Gavin Bartholomew. He's probably been their best offensive player so far this season. Um, this is going to sound – I don't mean it in a snarky way. They've got a good punter. So, I mean, they can play field position if needed – in a slower, lower possession, lower scoring type of game, if it gets to that, they they are good in that area. Um, defensively, a lot of uh, – there's just some new names in there, and there's some guys that have just moved up the depth chart naturally through time. And so, um, can Carolina take advantage of that? We'll find out. Um, Adam, I do think, again, one final thing, just from the Tar Heel perspective – this is a terrific opportunity. These, If you are a top 15-ish type team, which I think accurately represents where Carolina is right now, you've got to go win these games. This is just a game that you understand it's not easy, but you understand that that's, if you're going to be that type of team, this is the type of game you got to go win. Um, there's going to be, and again, I'm not saying trying to say anything negative about Pitt, I think as you look at it right now, there's better teams on Carolina's schedule in the future that will play a role when we get to that point of, of Carolina's schedule. But for right now, challenging game, good team. But if you're legitimately a top 15 uh, type of team, got to go win this game. Yeah, I would, I would just tweak that a little and say if you aspire to be a top 15 team, you've got to win this game. I think if you're in that 20 to 25 range, we'll see I think right now Carolina is just outside the top 15 and that's where they've earned their place you earn your place in the top 15 by winning a game on the road against a well-coached conference opponent 
who has played a very tight series with you in the past. And and that's what Carolina's going to have to do. It's it's mind-numbing that Carolina hasn't been 4-0 since 1997. Crazy to me. And, Adam, I haven't fact-checked this, but I've used it as my own fact. You told it to me, so if it's wrong, it's Adam's fault. <laughs> right. 97's the only time since 1983? Right. 40 years. The Tar Heels have been 4-0 one time in 40 years. That's crazy. And look, the Tar Heels haven't been a juggernaut, but they've had good teams. They've had good years. They've had stretches of two or three years in a row where they were really good. I mean, never, except that one time, 4-0. That's crazy. And it's not like 4-0 gets you to the Orange Bowl. Right, you're not talking 11-0. Wild stat. Wild stat. So, Tar Heels have a chance to do something. This is an opportunity to do something. This weekend. And be in the conversation. Yeah. Late game, 8 o'clock. We're on the air at 7 p.m. 